What's going on guys, I'm Bill and welcome to Bill's How To. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to replace a kitchen sink step by step. Let's get straight into it guys, let's do this. Alright guys, so this here is the old kitchen sink that we're going to be replacing with a brand new one. So as you can tell, it's pretty worn out, seen better days. In order to remove our kitchen sink, we need to undo our tap. We also need to take off our plumbing from underneath. So hopefully we'll be able to remove just the upper section of our plumbing and leave the trap intact. We've got our taps over here in order to shut off our water supply. With these sinks, generally speaking, there's little screws underneath. We'll see if we can have a look underneath and see if we can spot any of them. Oh, a little bit hard to see, but there's one right there. So you can see there, little bracket that's on the side. That's what's holding this in place. Depending on how old your sink is and who installed it, it can be installed in a variety of ways. The vast majority of times there's little clips underneath that will hold everything into place. Other times people have used adhesive, they've used silicon, um, so it really depends. Every kitchen sink may be a little bit different, but the process is going to be very, very much alike. So what we have to do first and foremost is find out the measurements in order to know um, which sink you need to replace it with. In this case here we're replacing it with a, another double bowl. It's going to be a little bit uh, different dimensions. Um, it all depends on your availability. So what's available in the area that you live in. So in this case, measure the width or the depth. So we've got there 500 and then take the measurement for your width. In this case here, we've got 1200. You also need to measure a few other things. So in this case here, we've got a double bowl. So we need to make sure that it's gonna fit under the cabinetry underneath here. So measuring the width of the bowl as well, both of them together. We've got about 700, so we need to make sure that we've got enough space in order to slot both those bowls out. You can see here, this has already been notched out as well for the double bowl. Um, you might be able to install a double if you've only got a single. You just need to do a little bit more work. You might have to cut out a few of the cupboards, and you also need to check your drawers. So in this case here, we've got a set of drawers on the left-hand side where our drainage um, section is of our kitchen sink. So you want to also measure that side there and you want to just check that measurement. So we've got 500 here. So you need to take all those measurements into account when you're looking for your new kitchen sink. So I've already taken all the measurements, found one that's pretty much exactly the same size. Our bowls are a little bit different. You can see here, they're both exactly the same size. So we might have a bit of a different offset for our waste or our plumbing down the bottom. Anyway, guys, now that we've got that out of the way, you know how to find your kitchen sink. So first thing we need to do is remove our kitchen tap. In this case here, we've got a mixer. So if we have a look underneath, we've got our shut-off valves right here. Turn these both off, lefty-loosey, righty-tighty, easy way to remember. Turn them both off, shut the water. Open up the tap, and now we've got no water coming out. That's exactly what we're after. Now if you've got two hot and cold um, separate taps, a little bit different to remove. Um, I'm not sure if I've got a video online, but if you guys want to see how to do that as well, let me know in the comment section below and I'll do that the next time I come around to one. So now we've got our tap switched off. Next thing we're going to do is remove the actual tap itself. Um, I might actually remove the waste first, um, simply because I want to try to get a bit of an angle so that you guys can see um, how to remove the old tap hardware. Um, so we're going to remove our plumbing from down here. We're going to separate these two into two pieces, make it a bit more manageable. Once we've got that one there off, and we'll undo our right bowl as well. Alright, so now we've got these ones here out, simply twist Give it a little wiggle and you can see how much rubbish has been built up in that over the years. Luckily there's no water in here. We'll put that on the side. So now we've got a little bit more room to work in here. What I'm going to do is show you guys the base of the tap here because in order to remove our kitchen tap, there's a little nut underneath. It's usually one or two nuts but it uh, just depends. We'll have a quick look underneath and see if we can see from here. So you can see there we've got two nuts up on top and we need to remove those. Now it is a little bit tight under here. So one of the best tools out there to use in order to remove these when you've got limited space. I always carry these in my bag. 
is a set of tube spanners. So you can see the tube spanners, nice and long, we can get them into tight areas. So before we undo those two little nuts, we're gonna just undo our hose connections here. Hopefully I can get a good view. Good old trusty GoPro. Now this one here has an extension on there for the hose, so we're just gonna undo it right where the extension is. Take off the hot water as well. So now we've got our hot and cold connection off. We can undo those two little nuts. All right, so we're working in a very tight area here and I cannot see at all. So I'm gonna do everything by feel. That's why these tube spanners come in so handy. So we've got the right size there. Slot that one all the way in. And then it also comes with a little wrench. So especially in these tight areas, like I said, every little bit of room will come in handy. Turn that one there over. and loosen it all off. So once that one there is fairly loose, we can probably undo it by hand. And so we're gonna move over to the next one now. There isn't always two nuts here, sometimes there's only one. So we've got that one there nice and loose as well. We can remove our little key and just undo this completely by hand. That's one. We'll loosen off our second one. So this is what those little nuts look like. These ones here are pretty long. Sometimes you only get short ones. Once we've done that, this should all completely come out now. So we're gonna be reinstalling the same tap here back into the new kitchen sink. So we wanna keep all the hardware these are usually pretty tight to pull out. You want to try and get one at a time. I might free up my other hand. All right, so now I've got both hands free. We're going to try and get one of them out of the way. And then we can take out the second one and we're going to keep our little rubber gasket here. Put them on a the side along with the rest of our hardware. So now we've got our tap removed, we've got our plumbing out of the way. What we need to do now is remove those little brackets that I showed you guys earlier, like that one there. I'm not too sure how many of them there are around the sink, but we'll take off one by one and try and pry up the sink and see how much um, more brackets there are. Simply because we can't see all the way around here, really nice and tight, but we're gonna need an extension. So we'll put on my extension bit. That's why I love power tools that have a light. Really hard to see without it. Once we've got that, the bracket is now loose. It's no longer pushing up against our timber frame here, which was holding it in place. I'll try to put my hand inside and feel around. We've got another one at the back, which is gonna be an absolute nightmare to show you guys. So you can see there, there's another one at the back. Really hard to see this one. And there we go. Get out of there. Now if we have a quick look here, it doesn't look like there's any more around the back. I can feel a bit of adhesive underneath, so there might also be some adhesive. What we need to do now is move over to this side here of the sink, so that means our kitchen drawer needs to come out. And we'll see if there's any more brackets. And you can see right there, there's one at the back here, and one on this side as well. All right, so now we've got all these brackets out. There should be not much left holding this. 
possibly some adhesive or some double-sided tape or silicon underneath the kitchen bench top so we're going to try and push this up by hand and you can see there it's starting to come up so what i'm going to do at this point is i'm going to put the gopro on my head i'm going to use a couple scrapers or pry bars or anything just to simply slide underneath in case there's a bit of adhesive and slowly pry that up and i do mean slowly you don't want to damage the existing kitchen um, and at the same time if you pull it up a little bit slow at a time the adhesive will slowly begin to lift all the way around so i'll show you guys what i mean so i'm going to start off with the skinny one push that up get a bit of clearance and i can see right there the adhesive underneath that so we're going to just slot this underneath push away that adhesive hopefully you guys can see that adhesive under there and we're just going to run this all the way around breaking that seal and it's got a lot of seal underneath there this is where this one here comes in handy our five in one, six in one, ten in one. Honestly, it's probably like a hundred and one, the most versatile tool out there. So we'll get across. This one here is a lot more rigid, so I'll be able to push up against the inside of the kitchen bench, so I don't damage anything. We'll take the thin one, and we'll remove that adhesive slowly. And you can see as I lift it up slowly, you can hear it. It starts to pull away. So I'm just going to keep working at that. We'll move our rigid one across again. And just pry that up slowly. So we're going to work all the way around until the whole lot's... Don't want to knock over my coffee. So we'll come over this side here now. And there we go. So we've got this side here all off. Now these guys have used a lot of adhesive under here. If you have a look, we've got double-sided tape, we've got silicon, and it looks like some sort of glue as well. So you can see there where they've actually glued it right down and it's pulled off a little chunk of that edge of the laminate right there. But we'll clean all of that up in a second. Remove the kitchen and we'll get this one here out of the way. So now the whole sink has been removed. What we're gonna do now is clean off all this adhesive. You can use a scraper, should hopefully remove everything as long as it's not too strong of adhesive. If you're using the scraper, make sure you keep it on the inner edge. You don't wanna damage anything outside. Um, we do have a little lip that overhangs, so if we do damage this little edge right here, that's not a problem, but we don't wanna damage any further out. So clean off all this adhesive, all this gunk that's been built up over time. So we've got all the adhesive off now. Just need to quickly clean this all off so that when we do put our new adhesive on here, it's gonna have a nice clean surface to stick to. So now it's time to open up our new kitchen sink. This one here might be a little bit different in terms of the fixings. So usually they still come with the double-sided tape. And we might also have a different form of fixing in terms of screws. So we'll just open it all up quickly and see what's inside. And we've got here a set of brackets which we may or may not need depending on the position once we drop everything in place. And we've also got our double-sided tape. Generally speaking, double-sided tape is sufficient on its own. Um, we'll see how we go with the brackets. Now with these ones here, you can either install the brackets and clamp them to the sides, or depending on the position once we drop it in, we might be able to directly drive a screw straight through the side and into the side of the actual kitchen bench. So. We won't know until we put everything in and see how it all lines up. Now these ones here have been installed in reverse. So what we need to do, you can see our waste is down there. So just remove everything. And to remove this, what we need to do is, you'll notice there's a little flat section right here. We're gonna turn that over to the left and hold the other side as well to make sure nothing rotates. 
So you can use a screwdriver or if it's loose enough, you can do it by hand. We've got that one there removed. Our seal, for this one here is a little bit tighter. Put the screwdriver, even if it doesn't reach both sides, you can put it on one side and just turn it from one side like that. Hold the other bit again. Once it's loose enough, undo it by hand. Grab that seal. So now we can just quickly test this one here out. Make sure it all fits inside. And we've got a perfect fit here. But you can see that little gap right here. Now this is why I don't like to use adhesive. I see a lot of people putting construction adhesive, really, really heavy duty epoxy underneath this just to try and hold it in place. So to install the waste, we're gonna put our rubber gasket, make sure it's the right way up. This goes on from underneath like that and then we've got our little flange here that sits on top and then we tighten everything up using that little bolt now before you start tightening anything down make sure everything's centered and you're happy with the location once you are then you can take your screwdriver and we can tighten that one there down. You want this one here to be on fairly tight, nice and secure to prevent leaks. And once that one there's on, we're gonna repeat the process on the other side. So what we're gonna do now is take the sink, I'll try to do it with the other hand, and we're gonna drop this on top We just want to make sure that everything lines up for our trap and our waste. So that's all going to drop in place. Once we seal everything up, that's all going to drop down and I've got a little bucket of water. I'm going to show you guys a little trick to get this done. But what we're going to do first, obviously we haven't got the tap connected yet. I'm going to start by applying my double sided tape all underneath. I'm going to drop the sink on top and then I'm going to add some weight. So using the plugs that came with the sink, we're going to seal that one there shut on both sides. I'm going to fill it up with water. That'll keep pressure down on the adhesive. So then once everything's in, it's not going to move everywhere. I'll leave this one here overnight so that everything can seal off and it'll be nice and squashed down. It'll be perfectly put in place. Then I can put all in my screws as well on the outside. So let's get started, guys. I'll put on the double-sided tape first. So for whatever reason, the double-sided tape that's supposed to come with this is single-sided for some reason. But if we have a look at it, the foam is actually pretty thick. So I'd prefer not to put this on. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use straight silicon on this little edge bead here. So we're going to apply silicon all the way around, fix that into place, screw in at least one of the uh, traps on the bottom or the plumbing underneath. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to fill this up with water. Putting that water in is going to sink everything down, then I can put in my screws and that's going to hold everything in place. So we're using some clear silicon here. Just need a decent bead all the way around. All right, so now we've got the silicon on. We're going to flip this over, put it in position. Try to get it on the first go. I'm going to have to line this up from underneath first. So you can see here where our uh, plumbing, our fittings are going to go. So make sure everything's lined up. We'll screw this on just quickly, temporarily. And we can see that we've got just a little bit of a gap. We're going to get that consistency all the way around by filling it up with water. So that's what the bucket of water was for. Make sure these ones here are both pressed down. We're going to be able to also test it and make sure it doesn't leak. Of 
quickly check underneath, make sure it's not leaking before you give yourself a bit of trouble. That's all nice and sealed. So we can fill up these sinks now completely with water. So we'll put this bucket on this side here. That's going to keep a nice consistent weight all the way through now. And any of that excess silicon that's come out, we're going to quickly wipe all that off. So now everything's in place. What we're going to do is you can see all those little sections, the little slot outs that are designed for the brackets. Now you can use the brackets still. However, I find it a bit easier to use the screws, especially at this point. So what I'm going to do is take a screw and we're going to drill that into any of these locations that we can reach with the drill. Remembering that everything's pretty tight in here. And you can see that that squeezed everything in place. That's now secure. So I'm going to go all the way around and we're going to do the exact same thing. Um, screwing in all of these screws. So now we can reinstall the tap. Make sure we put that rubber seal back on. Slot that one back down through the hole. Take our little flange, our tube spanner, make sure we've got the right size. So we're going to put this flange on as well, slide that all the way up to the top as much as we can. And then tighten on our nut. At the moment we're only doing them just a little bit tight at the moment so that we can line everything up from the top. And then once we've got our spout in the right position, we can tighten everything up completely. And then we can reconnect our water connections to the extension and tighten those ones there up as well. So we have to now reinstall the waste for our second bowl. However, because our bowl sizes were a little bit different, the offset is a bit off. So I had to get a new one and cut it to a different length. So it's pretty simple. Just simply cut it down to the required length, line it all up and screw it all in. So now we've got both our bowls connected, we've got our tap connected, our sink is in and it's been sealed in with silicon. We're going to leave the water in there, including the bucket overnight, let everything settle um, and set. And then tomorrow we're going to come back, reseal around the kitchen sink one more time and then we're going to test out the tap and make sure we've got no leaks. So I've cleaned inside here just to make sure when I come back tomorrow I can quickly have a look and see if there's any water leaking. All right guys, so we're back now the following day. As you can tell, both the bowls are still full of water. That means it's had a nice seal overnight and we haven't lost any of that water. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna release the water, make sure we've got no leaks underneath. We can also turn on our water. Make sure everything's on, we wanna also test that. So we might as well start off with that one there first. Make sure we've got no leaks around the hose, especially where we joint up the top there on our extension both hot and cold. And that there is now perfect. So we'll release the water as well. Make sure we've got no leaks. That's exactly what we're after. Nice and dry on both sides. So the only thing left to do now is to seal off this kitchen bench um, when we did install it yesterday, we did put silicon underneath, so it's all basically sealed off um, and any excess material oozed out. We wiped that nice and clean, um, but we're going to go over it just once more, make sure it's everything's nice and tightly sealed up, and then we're basically done. So we'll now quickly seal this one here all off. If you guys haven't seen my previous videos on an easy way to do your silicon beads, especially when it's a clear silicon, very easy to do using your finger um, and using a little bit of soapy water. So that's exactly what I'm going to do now. I'm going to be using my finger and a little bit of soapy water to give it a nice perfect finish. Now if you guys haven't seen my soapy water trick, check out my other video on how to make siliconing so much easier, especially when it's a clear silicon. A little bit on my finger. And that's how you get a perfect bead. And once that's done guys, we've got our new sink fully installed. Pretty simple and straightforward. As you guys have seen, I've shown you step by step how to do the whole lot. 
whether it's a single bowl or a double bowl, as long as it's a top mount or a drop-in sink, the process is going to be basically exactly the same. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video and you've learned something new today. Get out there and give it a go yourself, guys. As always, like, comment and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Bill. Thanks for watching. Bill's out too.